Welcome to Chicago, where the fires serve cold, but the wolves and the hawks never shiver in the snow. The bulls keep it running, the Sox run the south, the Cubs run the north, but the Bears run the house. True Chicago sports fans got their ears to the street. Any team make a move, and they never skip a beat. And in this house, this is where we be. Welcome to the show with E Rock and Big Z. Welcome to Chicago, coming to you from the True Chicago Sports Fan Cave. This is the TCSF Podcast with your host, E-Rock and Big Z. We're brought to you in part by Anchor, Noir Caesar, and Villain Radio Studios. All right, Z, week one of the Bears season is in the books. Is it already time to take a look at Foles? I don't know, man, but I think it might be uh, time for uh, putting some Foles in this house. <laughs> There's some Foles in this house. There's some Foles in this house. There's, There's some Foles in this house. house. There's some Foles in this house. house. There's some Foles in this house. I don't know, man. Trubisky pulled it off in the end, you know? He did. He did. He, I mean, he came up big in the fourth quarter. Uh, I think the first two quarters he had uh, some jitters. And uh, I think the, the offense and defense, you know, had to get their groove going on. But uh, he came in through uh, in the end with some good plays he and figured good it targets. Out. Yeah, he figured he it out. He definitely figured it out. Okay, okay uh, coming up later, we're going to be joined by Ill Brown to recap Bears and Lions, and we're going to take a quick look at this week's game against the New York Giants. But first, it's time for baseball. This is three up and three down. I think I'll perplex him with my slow ball. One, two, three strikes, you're out. We give you three good things and three bad things about our favorite baseball teams. Z, give me some good White Sox news. Tell me something good about the boys in black. Oh, boy, we have a lot of good news. I, I really don't even want to look at the bad stuff because there's not much out there for us. <laughs> but let's stick to the good stuff. All right, number one, we got an MVP on our team. We actually can talk about maybe two or even three MVPs yep. on our team. Uh, but let's start out with the most oh, important your one. Team. Your yeah, team. Yeah, my team. <laughs> oh, yeah, my team, not your team. Uh, Jose MVP Pito, Pito. Pito Abreu. He's batting 319, top 10 in MLB, 15 nice. homers. Uh He's, I think he's uh, second in the league. Okay. Uh, 47 ribbies, leads Damn. the league. I mean, the, the guy's destroying, destroying yeah. the league. Yeah. I mean, he's, it's, it's basically, it, it might be a, be, it might as well be a beach ball right now because he's hitting everything. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's sad that he had his uh, hitting streak broken the other day. Yeah. But guess what? He got out back on the horse and he hit a home run. There you go. That's what Pitos do. That's right. Pito power. <laughs> All right. Number two, number two, Tim Anderson. This boy is going for his second batting title. He's Again. hitting everything in sight. So you got Jose MV Pito hitting <laughs> everything, and then you got Tim Anderson leading the leading the charge. You know he's the leadoff man, and he's hitting three sixty two. Damn, that's uh, uh as of before the game on uh, today's game on Sunday. So this guy's destroying everything. He's going for his second batting title. The last person to do that was Miguel Cabrera. He's trying to do it again and again. He's trying to go back to back. Going back to back. There you go. All right, number three, number three, uh, Mr. Lopez. Mr. Yep. Lopez came in uh, and pitched a pretty good game after coming back from Schaumburg. Didn't we just want to get rid of him last show? We did. We did. And I said, I don't know if he had to go back to Schaumburg and start from scratch and fix his mechanics or fix his head. Whatever they did, it worked. Yeah. I mean, he had five innings pitch, zero runs, one walk, two strikeouts. He usually has more strikeouts than that. Yeah, you want to see those numbers higher. Right. And he was missing a lot of spots. I rewatched the game this morning. Uh, he was m missing a lot of spots. His his fastball, his high fastball was supposed to be like on the corners. It was over the middle, and they were hitting it. But there was no damage done, no foul, no harm. E even so, but he only got one walk. Right. You know, so that, that makes a big difference. If you miss your spots during the at-bat, it's a lot different than missing your spots to end the at-bat and then giving up walks. Yeah, I think a lot of it just... They were eager to hit on him because they said, well, he has no control. He's right. going to put it up there. So they were, they were trying to swing at him. Let's move over to the bat. Let's get this let's get this bat stuff out of the way real mm -hmm. quick. All right. Little boy Madrigal. Little boy Madrigal. <laughs> little junior over here. Uh, playing second base. Uh, you know, he's, he gets on first, gets on second. He hits. I, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. Now, the bat stuff, you cannot, you cannot, and you cannot run a stop sign on the way home. Oh, no. Yeah, you can't. All right, that is Little League Baseball 101. You, you would have figured, I mean, he's a little dude, like, well, let's be honest, but I mean, you figure at some point he played red light, green light. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you should know how this works already, man. Yeah, he ran a stop sign, and then later on in that uh, same game, he was on second base. The ball was hit to the shortstop. Mm -hmm. 
you're supposed to look at where the shortstop is positioned before you leave second base. Right. So if he does field it, you know to stop. If right. he doesn't, you go to third. And literally, the shortstop fielded it, and he went straight to third without even looking. So he made two errors like that, and that cost us about a, at least one run. It's a it's a bad feeling because I was coaching softball last year, and I basically told the girl to come from second to third before I realized that the ball was coming between short and third, and she got tagged out so quick, and I felt so bad oh, no. because she got out because of me. So I, I get it, but I mean, yeah, but you just got relayed. You know what? This is my mistake, not your mistake. Well, it's not just coach. that, but it's this. Is, you're also talking about a guy who's been playing baseball probably since he was like you know five years old, you right? Know? So that's the problem. Yeah, it is. The you're problem. in the big leagues. Yeah, th- th- there's no excuse for that. Right. Yeah, you can't blame that anybody but but him. All right, moving on. Number two, Keiko with his back issues. Is this something that's going to be lingering, or is this something like a one-off? Maybe his beard is too heavy. Uh, what about your uh, <laughs> guy with the arm that shaved his beard? Oh, well, hey, he, hey, he's on his, he's on the comeback trail, man. Don't 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 give my boy a hard time. He's on his comeback trail, man. I, I might have to put their barber, you know, and Keiko in, in you know in touch. But that that's the guy you got to remember. This is supposed to be the Sox version of John Lester. So if you're not up to task and you're you, you can't pitch. I mean, the guys that are on the field are only going to listen to an injured guy for so long. Right. And they, they put him on the IL uh, for 10 days. So pretty much he was going to skip a start anyways because of the, the stiffness in his back. And they just put him on there so they can have an extra roster spot. Mm-hmm. So he's coming back for, I think, game three with Minnesota. Um, and pretty much c- coming into the back end of that series so they can nail it down. I don't think it should be an issue. But we've got about 15 games as of today left. Right. So that's about two weeks left of regular baseball. You don't want your your workhorse, one of your aces, right, getting hurt and me- uh, messing up your playoff chances. So that's what's your third point? Third point, uh, I put I, I typed on Nomad Marza. <laughs> I know his name is different, but you know what? This guy's a nomad because he's all by himself in right field. <laughs> he's not hustling to the to the baseball to get to it. He's not hitting. He's hitting two forty with no home runs. None. None. Wow. When we traded for him, they were showing all these clips. And guess what? The clips of this home run power was against Lopez. Uh, you guys are on the same team now, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So he can't hit against Lopez anymore. So we traded for this big stick, this young guy, and he's not producing. So you know, If he's not going to produce, you know who I want in there? Who? Angle. Why? Defensive. Okay. His bat's a lot better. He's healthier. So your 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 boy Nomad Marza, yeah. wh- what is his nickname? His nickname is the Big Chill. Maybe you should put his ass on ice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> put Angle in there. He's better defensively. Angle can also play small ball. He runs a lot better. And at the same time, he's hitting a lot better. So you know what? You, you've got to put out the best players out there. He's got his. Ch- he's had his chance. That's it. Let's the, move on. The games are too valuable to have guys out there that are not doing their job. Yeah, if you're not producing, I need you to get out. We're in a pennant race. Yeah. All right. What is happening on the north side, E? Yo, my, my boys got jealous, man. <laughs> we, my, my boys got jealous. What they get jealous about? Uh, your boy Giolito going out there and throwing that no-hitter. So guess what? What happened today? So the dude that was not even going to be in the starting rotation, Alec Mills, he went out and threw a no-hitter. Did you say Foreman Mills? No, I did not. Oh. I, no, we no no di- no, no, no cheap discount? no cheap Korean clothing here, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Alec Mills threw the 16th no hitter in Cubs history. So we are doing our weekly shows now. So we're recording on Sundays, and we literally just now finished witnessing a great Bears comeback in the fourth quarter with Mitch throwing three tutties in the in the fourth, only to turn around and see Alex uh, Alec Mills finish off the no hitter. I mean that. That's a great sports day today. Come on, today. man. All and right. hey, and and Sunday today. Yeah. The Sox won too. Yeah. That's that's a that's a three in trifecta. a row. That's a trifecta. That's a trife- trifecta. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um. So Mills threw uh, five strikeouts, uh, three walks in only 114 pitches. That's, that's not bad at all. No, and he was his first career no hitter. You know, I had to bump my next point down to make sure that he was the first thing that I talked about. Oh, he well deserved for it. Absolutely. So. Uh, my second point was last night's game, which was the great comeback win against the Brewers. That's two two in a row, very significant games against the the Brew Crew. Um, until Saturday night's game, Josh Hader had never given, uh, never allowed two two strike home runs in any appearance of his career. Jason Hayward hit the game winning home run, and hey, Hayward is this dude. He's getting it done. And going into the ninth, the Brewers had a ninety six point three win expectancy for that game. 
yeah, they had their best closer out there. And guess what? You guys actually beat the best closer out there. Finally. Yeah, well, yeah, Finally. I mean, let's, let's be honest. Jason Hayward, we talked about this last week. Jason Hayward has been one of those spotlights that was actually unspoken about spotlights. Mm -hmm. The guy's a solid defensive player, but his bat has been a lot, a lot better since then. And that, and that takes me to point number two. Hayward and Hap leading the charge. You know, Jay Hay right now is a has a two ninety two average and five home runs. And Happy is an MVP candidate right now with a two eighty four average, twelve home runs, twenty six ribs, and his OPS is nine sixty nine. I mean, these are two guys who have had their struggles at the plate and they're getting it done right now for the Cubs. He's got twenty six ribs. Yep. Like all the way, 12, he got 13 on each side, bro. No wonder he's hitting well. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> what's, right. Your third, what's your third one? And uh, so my, my second third one, because I had to bump stuff around, was Kimbrell. Yeah. Kimbrell actually looking like he can pitch again. He just broke a 37-year-old Cubs record with his 10th straight uh, relief appearance with two or more strikeouts. He still has the stuff. And right now, I still trust Jeffress more. But any improvement at all to the Cubs pen is a plus. So... What what an easy pitch, you know, like the fifth, sixth, seventh, though? I've seen him pitch in the seventh. I've seen him pitch in the eighth. But I think it depends on what the score is right now. But you're trying to get confidence in your guy. I think it's it, it, it behooves the Cubs to move him into a less pressure situation. Maybe put him in the sixth or seventh or the eighth. I don't think he's going to be thriving into being a closer yet. No, but you because you, you still have Jeffress, which they didn't pitch in this last game because he already had two back to he had back to back games. And the same thing with Wick, but there's a reason why they have Kimbrough on the staff, and it was supposed to be the closer. So, put here's the thing: no matter what order they go in, I do not care as long as they don't blow the game. That's all I care about. Well, I mean, they weren't going to blow today's game. Say that much. Absolutely not. All right, what you got for the bad? So. Now that we lifted up our spirits, I found some good to finally really good things to talk about the Cubs. I still <laughs> got to talk about the bad. That's what it is. Javi, I love him, and I've talked about him every week, but he's still struggling. You know, he's batting 196. But what he did say, he said a part of it has to do with no longer being able to use the technology because of the Astros cheating scandal. He said that he uses videos to watch his at-bats so that he can adjust and this is a common practice around the league, and it could explain the struggles from So the, this is like in-game adjustments yes, from, from, so, from batting. Uh, from, from at-bat to at-bat. Correct. At-bat to at-bat. Okay. And, and it, it could explain some of the struggles of some of the biggest stars in the game. Well, yeah, we're looking at a different era. I mean, when we grew up the era, there was none of this stuff. No. So when a guy was hitting 280, 290, 300, you're like, wow, they're doing great. And they didn't have this technology, so. No, but at the same time, when you start to rely on it. Yes, this, it that, that's what I was going with that. That's what's going with that. They, they need that a constant feedback right. to see, oh, I dropped my elbow here, or my shoulders were out of place, or I opened myself up. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of issues like that, but at the same time, everybody's on the same playing field right now. No one's using it. Well, and that's the thing. is That actually brings me to my second point. I mean, you look at uh, guys around the league that are having struggles. Is it, due be is it due to the fact that they can't use the tech that they might have been relying on this whole time? You know, Rizzo is sitting at 210, and you look around the league, and you have Kristen Yelich hitting 203. Uh, Nick Castellanos, 230. J.D. Martinez is hitting 208. And your boy from the Dodgers, Max Muncy, is 194. Yeah, that dude crawled under the carpet and someone stomped him out. I mean, and these are, big, these are horrible. big everyday names that everyone knows. You know what I mean? These aren't just the guys. So, I mean, that that's a problem. And um, so I'll talk about my third thing here is the Cubs struggles across the board. Um, you look at you got Happy and you got Hayward doing well. But, I mean, that's about it. I mean, Contreras is starting to pull himself up a little bit. But... You know, the Cubs post a team batting average of 229, which is the 24th in the Major League Baseball. That's not going to cut it, man. No. Especially, especially in the playoffs. You've exactly. got to play the rest. And and I will tell you this. I, I, I honestly think that the only reason they've held on to first is because the Cardinals have not played games. Yeah, right. So they haven't played the rest of the games. It looks like the Cubs and, and uh, Cardinals are going to play, play some double headers coming up. Well, the, I think the Cubs did, but I, th I want to say the Brewers have their head double headers. That's okay. what it is. Okay. So, Cubs, but the Cubs already played a couple double headers with the with the cards, but the Brewers have to play theirs. But the Cardinals are still playing these double headers, which means they can catch up quickly. But it also means that they get tired quicker. Oh, most definitely. I mean, you know, because we we had our struggles against some of these double headers because you know you got the back to back games. They they stayed in first last show, right? Because the night before they played the Cardinals and won, and because they won, even if they lost the the, the both games of the double header the, the following day. They were still they still stayed in first place because they had kind of made made up a game ahead of time. Right, because right now it's on percentage. 
So um, yeah, I mean the Cardinals that that issue it'll get resolved at the end of the season. You got what two more weeks, so we'll see what, you, what happens. You know, but yeah, and, and that's the thing is that you know the the Cubs are in with runners in scoring position. They're two thirty five, and we already talked about Javi and Riz, but look, Schwarber isn't much better. He has a two oh eight average, and he's living by the long ball with ten home runs. And I mean, we know that that's what he's there to do. But that's I mean, bread and butter. He, here's the thing: you got to keep the wheels going. You got to get guys on pace. You also have uh, on base and, and keep pace with the rest of the league. Um, you also have uh, KB, who I've been on for a while. You know, he's, he's super frustrating. And, yeah, he's only played 24 games. But a 206 average, that's not going to cut it, man. That's not. I don't know what they're going to do. What, what he's going to do next year, especially with a 206 average, I mean, he's not going to get paid like that. He's going to get paid for past performance and what they think he's going to be able to do in the future. And that's kind of what happens in sports, more yeah, specifically in, baseball. like, the NFL. Yeah, NFL does that too, yeah. You know, they, they they basically pay for past performance. But, I mean, it's getting out of hand. It sure is. All right, that closes the three up and three down segment. Yeah. All right. So let's take a pause with the cause. You'll listen to some ads from our sponsors. And we'll be right back. I think I'll perplex him with my slow ball. One, two, three strikes, you're out. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So I know you want to do it. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome back, everyone, to the True Chicago Sports Fan Podcast with E-Rock and Big Z. We're here with our boy Il Brown to talk about that awesome last-minute Chicago Bears victory. Victory. Yeah. That was a roller coaster call. ride, man. Yeah. That's definitely like, a roller coaster ride of a game. I, I don't know if you want to call that a, a, a for sure victor. I mean, it's a win in a win column, but there's a lot to fix. There's a lot to fix, but you came back and won that game. Trubisky won the game. Yeah, he won, but. Uh, that was the first time, one, well, one of the few times I've seen Mitch go out there and win a game for us. So. The last time was that playoff game where he brought it down, but they didn't actually score. We could have used Cairo Santos that day. <laughs> Tell you that. <laughs> so, what's your major impression that's going on that uh, with with the Bears in the first quarter rather than in the fourth quarter? Like what? Uh, halftime adjustments. Okay. Uh, Mitch went back to his off-season coaching with Coach uh, Christensen, who's a friend of mine, actually, quarterback guru. Footwork night and day from first yeah. half to oh, second yeah. half. All about the footwork. That's it. Okay, he, 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 he had the happy feet again. If he could correct that, yeah, he had the happy feet in the first half. I'm not so, going to blame it on the lack of preseason, none of that. That's just something that he has to be conscious of as far as his mechanics go. If that dude goes out there in the second half, probably looks at, look at the Microsoft Surface <laughs> and he's looking at his feet like, holy crap, I forgot everything I learned all summer. Let me be conscious of my footwork. And you could just see the difference in the accuracy and, and the velocity. So really what you're saying when, is that you think set. you think it was just jitters. No preseason, no reps, and you go right into right. live bullets. So, that matters. You know what right, I'm saying? So something that me and Eddie noticed uh, during the first half, you know, he had happy feet. He, yes. he was jumping up and down, you know, anxious, moving back. Yes. Right, and he Absolutely. never plants his feet when he throws. And now you look at the fourth quarter, and he's a little bit more composed and moving around. And when he's throwing, he's actually planting that, that, those feet to get that uh, – to get that power to go through that throw. Yeah. And they're, they're not, no longer short. They're right on the money. Right, absolutely. You know, there was a couple of things that we that we saw. It seemed like they only wanted to go to Robinson in, in the beginning of the game in the first quarter. And, you know, the big difference is what I was saying when I was watching the game is that, you know, you could see every throw that he was throwing, you know, you had to make this crazy acrobatic move to be able to catch the ball. Jimmy Graham had a, a very catchable ball that he missed time that jump horribly. But even when the one um, you had Robinson coming down the field the, right down the middle, I mean, you saw him spread all the way out, and he couldn't. He was not going to be able to make that catch. Right. It's all about mechanics, man. I can't stress enough. You know, being around some exceptional quarterbacks, and even at the high school level, man, the way we drill home footwork, 
those just those mechanics, man. Like if you got happy feet, you're gonna throw a lot of interceptions. You're gonna have a lot of overthrows. It's just not possible to play quarterback at the highest level with happy feet, man. And they probably at halftime got on his heels about that. Yeah. And you just could see the difference the whole second half. What I did uh, see, I didn't see stare down receiver Mitch. Right. At all the whole game. Oh, he did it a couple times. I, 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 yeah, I, I definitely saw it a couple times, but it, it was a big difference as it went along because you couldn't actually see him going through his progressions and, and yeah. picking a different receiver. Yeah, I mean, it was it's like night and day. You know what I mean, every quarterback stares down the receiver from time to time. Right. There's no such thing as perfect quarterback play. But, uh, yeah, he, he definitely showed me something as far as going through his progressions. Like, I could literally see him processing, which Matt Nagy likes to throw that word out a lot. Like, okay, he's literally on his third read right there. Oh, that's his second read right there. Or, you know what I mean? So he corrects his footwork, man. He'll so be a top 15 quarterback. What kind of grade would you uh, give him today? I will give Mitch a B- minus for today. Uh, yeah, B- minus? I was going I, with a C plus. I, I, I like the B-, minus, and, and that, to me, that three, uh, three touchdown fourth quarter, that boosts him up because I mean he was probably looking at like a, maybe a D plus until yeah. he until yeah, he, he got into the fourth down. quarter because he was overthrowing receivers he was throwing it behind he, the 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 fourth uh, fourth and seven uh, throw in the first quarter to Ted Ginn it was way way behind him they they were three and seven when they were deep in Lions territory and um, or it was the third and seven uh, play and we we couldn't tell if it was a good toss that he like he threw the ball away or if he just overthrew his receiver yeah the one into the uh, the corner of the end in zone the corner yeah. of the end yeah. zone on the left yeah. side you know because right, the, right. the receiver was covered so it, it's it was definitely that day to see what what happened uh as the game progressed you know especially in that fourth i don't feel like the offense has a lot of upside because we are able to utilize the middle of the field now with the tight end play it's just you know i think more reps man they'll be fine uh, Mitch is definitely just got to just work on keep keep his footwork consistent throughout the year, and they, they'll be fine. What I really want to talk about is the, the lack of the pass rush, man. Like, yeah, I mean, there, there's an upgraded offensive line there in Detroit, but you know, it's like like I, I always say this, man. It's such a difference from practicing against your teammates, and you know, you guys are kind of conscious of not you know trying to get injured, things like that. Well, you also get used to their their tendencies when you see them so much. Yeah, it's practice, man. You, you know yeah. what guys going to throw at you, and you know you know it's counters, you know all of that, and then literally have no preseason. You go out there with live bullets. Right, but but, but you have, just like, you know, they made halftime adjustments, these coaches are going to make game-to-game adjustments, saying, okay, game we, to game. Right, we looked at it, we looked at the film, and you know what, we didn't rush the quarterback as much as we should have. And you know what, this next quarterback, you know, with New York, he he's somebody we can we can put a lot of pressure on. Absolutely, and he can make he's gonna make mistakes, and and the secondary is gonna take care of the rest. Well, and hopefully they're gonna have Quinn back too because Quinn wasn't a, uh, able to go. So we we didn't even get to see we didn't even get to see the new toy. I, I was uh, really impressed, not with his tackling, but his with his coverage, considering how much they tested him today. Jalen Johnson uh, looked really good. Yeah, he's, he's gonna like- get better and better. Jalen Jalen Johnson, they definitely picked on him because there was uh he wasn't he the one guy uh trucked. Yeah, he got, <laughs> he got trucked. But not now yeah, again. Was just welcome to the NFL, bro. Right, but but again, it is it is the um you have someone running at full speed and just basically ran him down. And they did they definitely picked on him a little bit, you know what I mean? Like I think who, who, I think it was uh Hawkinson. Um they got him the ball and he had to like push him out of bounds. So when there was a couple times where Detroit took advantage of his inexperience and and took it right down the field and used their their bigger players to kind of push them around a little bit. Yeah, that's gonna happen in the NFL though. Yeah, and then you know we coming into a game where you literally have had no game reps at all. Like I said, you're going from zero to a hundred literally. Like you talk about COVID practice, man. Like yeah. <laughs> it ain't yeah. the same. It's like the same off season, man. Like not at all, not at all. COVID off season, man. So. You know, them guys ain't out there banging and going crazy in practice, even the, the, the way they was, you know. I mean, training camp, you used to get hit harder in training camp than you would ever see on a Sunday. Right. And training camp was where you get punished. Right. And Well, it's kind of it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like batting practice where you use the donut on the bat. So, it, you know, when you actually swing it, it feels a lot lighter. So exactly. when you actually get get those hits in the game, they feel different. Right. Um, exactly. You know, there, there was a couple of things that uh, that we did see that was a big improvement. One of one of which was the way that they utilized the running game, and that included Patterson. The Patterson, way that they kind of put they brought Montgomery. him into the game, and 
even the the scheme they used for Cohen uh, was a lot different than before. Right. So they actually made him run up the middle, which is you know something different and something nice. And that, all the runarounds that they kept doing last right, year. Right. Instead of losing year. instead of losing yards. Yeah, Coach Castillo, man. Like uh, you know, we go over our our, our pre show notes and stuff. You know, Coach Castillo, man. Like I was saying, night and day. He's he's gonna demand that the offensive line be physical in the run game. He's gonna uh, demand that they know their assignments. Uh, we run a zone scheme, so it's literally uh, one cut, you know. You, the offensive line blocks in one direction, back reads it, cuts back. It's going to be there a lot this year. I thought Montgomery looked very good, especially coming off of groin, man. He's only going to be yes. better. So. Yes. All right. So what grade do we give the running backs? Gets a B-plus from me, man. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with you there. I like that. I, I give him a B-plus for this one. So now here's a here's a couple of things that were really frustrating. Now again, we did not have a preseason, so we're just kind of basing it off of what we saw today. But you know, Detroit had a lot of time at the end of the first uh, first half or at the very end of the first half to go right down there and get a touchdown, and then they come back, get the ball right to start the second half of the game, and to get another touchdown right away. So by the time we get to the third quarter, they're dominating the game, and it's twenty three to six, and they're up by the end of the third quarter. Now. What's frustrating to me is that I feel like when Mitch has to think about it too much, that's when he gets into trouble. Because when you saw him use his actual instincts and go out there and just play ball, that's when he balled out. But when he actually has to think about it, he says, okay, how can I keep from getting behind? That's when he gets in trouble. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I, I just want to say uh, that's part of game plan. Everything's scripted for Mitch coming out, you know, first quarter, second quarter. I feel like Nagy just needs to throw the playbook at this kid and let him just ball out on instinct. Yeah. When you script out something, you're literally hoping that it goes according to the script. Yeah. And when it doesn't, you can see him get frustrated. But in the fourth quarter, when it's go time, hey, man, I got to throw these plays at you that I know is going to work. It's just read and react. And but but isn't st- still isn't it s- some of that on Mitch where you have to just sit there and like you still have to let instinct take over because I feel like sometimes Mitch is just so scared to disappoint people and he's had a lot of pressure on him. But I feel like he's so scared to disappoint people that he you know it's kind of like well I I hope my I hope I make my dad proud you know you know I I I, I, <laughs> I swept the floors today. No, he needs to sheds, go out there. He needs know. to go out there and just you know move his feet. And use his feet to, you know, as, as an asset. I'm not gonna. He doesn't have to stay in the pocket because he, he panics if the play breaks down. Like you, you, you see him, and and yet ha- throw ahead. some names out there at you guys, man. Peter Tom Willis. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, PT. Henry Burris. Yep. Rick Meyer. Oh boy. We've seen a lot worse than Mitch. Most definitely. Like you Most said, definitely. he needs to get out of his own head. And we, I mean, it's it's not like we haven't seen him do it when it counts most, like, ball out. You know what I mean? So it's there. Right. It's just a matter of, uh, I feel like it's so much pressure on him that, man, if I don't ball out, I'm going to lose my job. I'm going to yeah. be disappointed. Well, if he's going to lose his job. job. He's going to lose his job. But, and, and that's the thing is that it's it's that I don't want to disappoint anyone. And yeah. and, and it's the that's whole And he has yeah. a lot of pressure. And that's in your own head. And, you know, sometimes you got to just say, screw it. Let's see what happens. Let's ball out. If I make a mistake, I make a mistake. But I, that, I, I would love to see that out of him. I would love to see fourth quarter Mitch, you know, just start out from the, the game like that. That's, yeah, as your quarterback, you should be the alpha male. You, you should yes, be you should be the leader. The, right, you're the leader. You're saying, okay, this is the play we're running and so forth. If, you know, the first two quarters are scripted, he's really not the leader. He's like, oh, well, I mean, this that's, is that's standard NFL practice well, I know, to I know, script the game it, in the beginning. No, you know I know I mean? that. But he but needs it, to be able to speak back and be, talk back and be like, hey, this is I what I see. Play. This right. is, that, that's this exactly, is what I'm seeing on the field. That and we need see. to change yes. this. Right. So he needs to make those adjustments, in game adjustments, without his coach telling him. He should make those on yeah. his own at this point. Yeah. That would get that dude benched so fast. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, not, he's not there yet with, with Nagy's system in the playbook yet. But you know that's that that takes but, time, man. You're but isn't about, it isn't that a problem two years in? Not really, man. Because I, I mean, I've seen some generational quarterbacks it not click for them to year three, year four. But there there wasn't the same pressure back then. You had time to develop a quarterback. You know what I'm saying? That's Steve true. Young, that true. Those guys got to sit and learn, man. Like even Aaron Rodgers got to sit and learn. You know what I mean? Like it's it's now it's everything is so accelerated. Like hey, man, we take this dude in the first round. 
he's got a ball out day one. And then add the pressure of a Mahomes and a Watson actually balling out day one. It's just all goes back to experience. Like yes. Mahomes and Watson, even in college, had way more reps than Mitch. So it's like Mitch is literally learning the process, the speed of the game on the fly at but the see, highest possible level. And that's bad scouting. But right. And and that's the, the what you just said right now leads me to the point where it just sounds like they picked the wrong quarterback to begin with. Well, we all oh, know that's that. without a doubt. We are you know, that. that that's that's what that's just what it is. You know what I mean, and and that's a that's just a bad organization move. But but here here's what I'll say. I says you, you got two minutes and thirty five seconds left in the game, and Kyle Fuller comes up with that ball that was aided by Eddie Jackson. And you could see when Ooh, that if ball. you bet that in Vegas, that was a nice man, too, that man. And, 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 and that's the thing is that it was like you know, a thousand to one for Kyle Fuller pick. Right, and, and but but you should have sent who, that who, in, man. I could have bet it. Who who's been the the guys that are picking off the ball for the last couple of years is Eddie Jackson and it's Fuller. Right. And once Fuller, Fuller came in like like wildfire. Then he kind of slowed down, and then like when it was pressure on him, he 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 started making them plays again, and now he's got his money, and now he feels like the the player that we always knew he could be, you know. Indeed, Kyle Fuller, man, is a dog, man. Like physical, he's he's fast, he's instinctive. You know, I'm just glad it clicked for him because he was always he was almost going to be a casualty of bad coaching regimes. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm, I'm glad he's in a scheme where he can show off his talent, man. Like even at Virginia Tech, I mean. Dude, dude could cover man, he could cover zone. You just, uh, you know, he kind of had a little injury bug to start his career in Chicago, but you see what that dude, him and Eddie Jackson, are just lethal. Uh, to Sean Gibson, he'll he'll get him speed. Uh, he'll get up to speed as well. He's he's very physical. Uh, yeah, he came yeah. down and put a pop on uh, on Carryon Johnson, and I was like, yeah, that's that's he's he's the box guy for sure. <laughs> but uh, Khalil ate double teams all day. Yeah, you really saw that Barkevius Mingo is a special teams guy. Yeah, for the rest of his career. Yeah, like, that that. For real. I, and, and I and I forgot. I was I saw his name, and it reminded me of uh, what, what's that guy that from back in the day? He's in, in the summertime. You know that song I'm talking about. That's what he, that's what it reminded <laughs> me of. Like you know what I mean? That that pause did uh, that did that uh, that uh, used the beat from. You know what I mean? That's all. I'm like, hey, otherwise I'm never gonna remember this guy. So here we go. Yeah, we got in in the fourth quarter, eight for ten, eighty nine yards, three touchdowns. That's Mitch. That's Mitch wow. balling out right there. That's, that's Mitch. Maserati Mitch right there. That's, that's right, that's right. Maserati Mitch. <laughs> so I mean, no, you know, no more no more Camry Mitch. Right. <laughs> so 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 look. With, with with that being said, who's your player of the game? Uh, I gotta go, with Mitch. There Mitch gets my game ball, man. Like when it counts the most, can you go out and pull the you know the rabbit out the hat? And he did it today, man. Uh, that throw he made to uh, Miller was – you can't yeah. coach it. You can't teach and, it. You can't, <laughs> that's how I know the kids got talent, man. Like, But that was that was frustrating to wait so long for Miller to get involved with the game. That was extremely fr- – because I'm sitting there all – like, where is this guy? These now receivers saw, that they have are going to catch the ball. Just make sure you can throw it to them. And Mooney, Mooney looked good. When yeah. you got him the ball, Mooney did look good. Allen, Allen Robinson looked good, you know? But you got to get the ball to your guys. Yeah. You put it in those guys' catch radiuses, man. Even, you know, Jimmy Graham commit. You put it in those guys' catch radiuses, man. They're going to they're gonna make plays for you. So, if Mitch can just make sure, like, I, I'm just keep going, coming back to this. If he can make sure his footwork is solid all year. And you know what? I will say this. Uh, fourth quarter pass protection was a lot better. Yes. Uh, Mitch was ducking a gunfire the first three quarters, man. I ain't going to lie. Like, he didn't really have – a chance to really step up in to a majority of those throws, although when he did have time, happy feet showed up. But yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's 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 a hundred percent on Mitch, man. At this point, you gotta go out and just be sound with his fundamentals and you'll see the results, man. Uh I mean this dude'll never be a generational quarterback. We already know that. But we just need him to be serviceable serviceable. Man, I need him to be top fifteen, man. Right, that's it. Right. Yeah. So, so next week we're looking at the Giants. We're looking at the yeah. young quarterback Daniel Jones, but we're also looking at Saquon. Saquon yeah. Okay, that's going to be the biggest challenge to me because I watched an older Adrian Peterson run them up and down the field. Like he's always done. That's just what he does. So, so I need yeah. two things from you. I need to know how we're going to be able to stop Saquon, and what is your prediction for next Sunday's game? I got the Bears really coming out. And- cleaning a lot of things up. So I'll say 27, 27 to 10. Oh, wow. Ooh. 
Okay. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna kick the that, Giants' that, ass. That, that's aggressive. That, de- that defense, that defense is very proud. They're gonna watch that film. They're gonna correct. They're gonna correct a lot of that crap you saw today, man. Yeah. A lot of the run fits and a lot of that stuff was just rust. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. The when, passing. When it mattered, the, the passing of defenders from one guy to another. It was really really rusty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it just they just looked out of sync. Like, wow, this is actually this game counts. Like. <laughs> you know what I mean? They had that yeah. Like, holy well, crap. I, I think I, it, I think hard. it really, it really depends on if they can get Quinn back for this next game. You know that I think that having your like I said your new toy to yeah. show off in this next game is make a going to make a big Abs- difference. Absolutely, man. Uh, what, what what we did uh, learn today was that Eddie Goldman is worth every penny. Yes. They're just trying to patch it up with Jenkins and. Bilal Nichols is a five technique, man. They need they gonna mess this dude up. There's too much free agency help at the nose out there right now. If I'm the Bears, hey, you got 17 mils still just sitting there. Yeah. You go out and get a Marcel Darius. You go out and get a, a Snacks. Snacks is a free agent right now. Uh, yeah, Dave I Harris. did see that. Go get one of them big dudes. Put them in the middle of your defense. While they're not as good as Eddie Goldman, they can they can definitely plug the middle is and that scheme is is definitely nose tackle dependent man and Eddie Goldman is one of the best best in the business you saw that today like a lot of those cutbacks Eddie Goldman eats two of those guys on a routine basis and I'll, I'll pop on any game film and show you Eddie Goldman swallowing the center and beating up guards all game long and that just wasn't there today and you saw it. You saw it. Adrian Peterson was like, ooh, no Eddie Goldman. He cut on back. You yeah, know what that I'm saying? Is true. So, so we, we missing that dude right now, for real. All right, Will. That's uh, some fantastic analysis. We appreciate you being on the show. Uh, Indeed, everyone, that's- man, looking forward to next week. Stop Saquon, you win the game. I don't trust Danny Jones. He's worse than I, much. Exactly. Yeah, I, that's I, exactly I agree. what I, I agree, agree with you. All right, everyone. Il Brown is our featured Bears uh, contributor. He is the host of the Beat the Block podcast. You can find it on all major platforms. And don't forget to check out NoirCaesar.com. Um, thanks a lot, Will. All right, man. See you uh, guys next week. We'll see you next week, man. That's Bear Bear down. That. We out of here. Bear down. Bear down. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. So I know you want to do it. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome back, everybody, to the TCSF podcast with E-Rock and Big Z. E-Rock. Yo. I think it's time. It's time. Let's fight. It's food time, bro. Let's fight. Let's fight about food like we oh, do every Oh, let's stir this pot, baby. That's right. That's right. So guess what? What up? We talked about hot dogs one day. We agreed. Yeah, hot I know. Dog, a hot dog is a sandwich, all right? I give it up. We're like one for eight. One for eight. <laughs> so, <laughs> let, let, let's talk about burgers this time. All right. Well, burgers from where, bro? From uh, the small White House, uh, also known as White Castle. Mm, mm, mm. Oof. All right. Now, here's the question. White Castle, hell yeah or hell nah? Hell yeah. Stop. Give me those freshly made little burgers with Mm-mm. onions on them. I mean, I take out the pickles. I'm not a pick- pickle guy, but. Come on. Oh, man. I'm going to eat like 15 of them. Dude, If let me tell you something. Hell nah. Look, I got I got two daughters. I got a wife. I, even my dog is a girl, Okay. If I eat White Castles in my house, none of these females are going to talk to me for about three years. So you do this on purpose? I, I, well, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say that. But let me tell you something. If you eat White Castle like that, I bet your plumber loves you. Oh, no, no. White Castle is a special occasion. Like It's like quarterly, once every three months. Uh, once, <laughs> your, your plumber loves you and your girlfriend hates you. Because <laughs> one's going to come, you're going to call them all the time, and one you're never going to call. She's be like, why don't you like me anymore? Be like, uh, it wasn't me, baby. It was the castle. <laughs> it yeah, was the blame castle. Blame it on the castle. Blame it on the castle. I mean, look, like I said, they're tasty, but, I mean, you know, it, it's going to be doo-doo brown. You better stock up on TP and pretend it's the pandemic, okay? Doo-doo brown. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, everyone. That's the time we got for today. Our Bears segment was brought to you by Noir Caesar. Visit noircaesar.com for more information. Huge thanks to our Bears contributor, Il Brown. Don't forget to check out his podcast, Beat the Block, which is available on all major platforms. Shout out to Ronesh, our producer, Jay Soto. Shout out to Mike Logic and Ideal from the All Net Podcast. Check them every other Monday, especially now during the NBA playoffs. Check us out on social media. Our brand new Twitter, you can find us at True Shy Fans. That's True C H I Fans. Find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Spotify, and reach out to us on our email. We want to hear from you guys. Our email is True Chicago Sports Fans at gmail.com. And as always, until next time, be good to each other. For the love of sports. A man, that's a full-grown man right there, okay? Hey!